Let's talk about Greta Van Fleet, a young rock band that has burst on the scene in recent years. They were first labeled as a Led Zeppelin clone, but over the years, people started to see them for what they really are. A young rock band that just wants to revive the classic rock sounds of the early 70s. Starcatcher is their third album released on July 21st, 2023 through Lava and Republic Records. The album was produced by Dave Cobb, who has also worked with artists such as uh, Chris Stapleton and Brendan Carlisle, and was recorded at RCA Studios in Nashville. Let's talk a little bit about the band's history. They're from Frankenmuth, Michigan, and they formed in 2012. The band features three brothers with the last name of Kiska. Josh and Jake are twins, and um, they are on vocals and guitar, respectively. Their brother Sam plays the bass guitar and keyboards, and Danny Wagner plays the drums. They were signed to uh, Lava Records in March 2017, and a month later they released their debut uh, studio EP called Black Smoke Rising. Their debut album, uh, Anthem of the Peaceful Army, was released in October 2018 and reached uh, number one on the Billboard 200 chart. Their second album, The Battle at Garden's Gate, was released in uh, April 2021 and also reached uh, number one on the Billboard Mainstream Rock chart. I actually reviewed that album and I will link it in the end. Now back to the new album, Starcatcher. Uh, this album finds the band branching out with a more experimental sound. Uh, the album was also said to be more personal and introspective than the band's previous work. Greta Van Fleet has said that Starcatcher is their most determined uh, album to date. The band uh, released four singles prior to the release of this album. Meeting the Master was the first single released back in April of 2023. This one has a psychedelic rock feel. It has some soft acoustic guitar playing and some psychedelic folk rock that sounds a lot like it's out of the late 60s. Josh is starting to develop his own vocal style at this point and doesn't it sound like he's paying homage to uh, Robert Plant? I even noticed that he was sounding like uh, Geddy Lee on that last album, but I think the vocals are much better. The song has some of that late 60s psychedelia. He lets out some louder vocals in the second half of the song, along with some uh, high-pitched screams. The guitar solo comes in at this point, and um, it sounds very good. Sacred Thread is a second single released on May 19, 2023. I've been trying to avoid the Led Zeppelin comparisons, and I know I'm going to say that a few times in this video, but the song has a drum intro that seems to summon the spirit of uh, John Bonham. The guitar riffs are, are also somewhat Lepid or Zeppelin-esque. I think uh, after the first 30 seconds or so, the song takes on a new life. Uh, this is a very melodic rock song in the style of Greta Van Fleet. It's not a hard rocker, but there are a lot of amazing guitar riffs and melodies. This is a beautiful rocker that is draped in orchestration and a dreamy atmosphere. Farewell for Now is the third single released on June 9th, 2023, and the song has a blues rock sound. I like the guitar tone on this song. They use a slightly distorted tone and it brings back the sound of the 70s classic rock, but with some modern uh, sounds mixed in. I think the guitar playing is first rate. This is a feel good and introspective song. The vocals are very high spirited and it was a good song in general. The Falling Sky is the fourth single and this one was released on June 27, 2023. This is one of their harder rockers and reminiscent of some of their earlier work. The guitar playing on this uh, song is solid. Josh is able to powerfully deliver the vocals and able to reach some high screams. This is another blues rocker with some harmonica that's played in uh, the middle of the song. Let's talk about uh, the other album tracks. Uh, Fate of the Faithful is the opening track, and this is a slower and more atmospheric type of song. They seem to draw a lot of inspiration from the psychedelic rock of the 60s with a lot of multicolored guitar riffs and conscious expanding sounds. I like that they have a better production on this album. The song is not a hard rocker. It's not very melodic, but it's a little more experimental.
Waited All Your Life is a song that's mostly an acoustic song with some classic rock guitar riffs uh, coming in later in the song. It's a very peaceful type of song. The vocals are very harmonious. It evokes a tranquil and peaceful uh, state of mind as you listen to it. The song is more melodic. It's rhythmical and fairly laid back. Runway Blues is a song that's only uh, 1 minute and 18 seconds, and it's one of the harder rockers on the album. It moves at a fast pace and has a classic blues sound. I've been trying to avoid the Led Zeppelin comparisons. I know I'm going to say it one more time, but this does uh, remind me a lot of them. Um, Josh's vocals uh, sound a little like Robert Plant again, although uh, he has been trying to avoid that on this album and previous albums in general. But um, it's not really a bad song. The Indigo Streak is a song that brings back some of the psychedelic rock of the 60s. Uh, there's a lot going on in the song. Most of it's uh, very interesting. I think they put a lot of work into the composition, which uh, does make a difference and makes the listener kind of quite curious to see what they're going to bring next. The guitar sounds very interesting, and the song is not very energetic, but it does have an appealing uh, vibe to it. Frozen Light has a really cool guitar riff in the intro. This is one of the harder rockers, and it evokes the sounds of proto-metal of the late 60s. It still incorporates some atmospheric and psychedelic sounds in the composition. Um, the bass guitar sounds very good. It has a distinct and rich sound. Uh, the second part of the song has a more of a psychedelic vibe with some expressive guitar playing. Um, we're almost at the end of the album, and... Um, in general, I thought everything was good, but now we have another song called The Archer. It's a song with acoustic guitars and has a very bluesy sound that's mixed with some slightly distorted guitars. The guitar playing is very distinctive and the drumming stands out with some interesting beats. The guitar solo also reminded me of some classic Jimi Hendrix. The final guitar licks were very interesting with an acoustic uh, blues rock sound. So in conclusion, I think this was more of a mature album. I see them delving more into psychedelic rock territory and away from some of their earlier sounds, which was compared a lot to Led Zeppelin and other classic rock bands. They're still bringing back the sound of the late 60s and early 70s, but I feel uh, this band is starting to find their own identity. I think they put some more work into the compositions of the songs. It seemed to have a very like full and bright sound, and I thought in general the album was very good. I think my favorite song in the album was probably Frozen Light. I really like that guitar riff that they played in the intro. Uh, but for now, I'll give it a score of an 8 out of 10. That might go up or down. It's still too early to tell. I think it's one of the better albums. I know they only have about four or so, but just let me know in the comments uh, what you thought. Please like this video. It helps me with the algorithm. If you want to see uh, my review for the Battle at Gardens Gate, uh, I did it two years ago. I'm going to stick that one right there. I'll put a link to that one uh, right there. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.